What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the recap call game. Whatever you want to call it, we are back. Yesterday, we had an amazing game. It was the the greatest sporty event that happened yesterday, if you know, you know. The Warriors versus the Boston Celtics. Jason Tatum, plus 40. Stephen Curry, unguardable. 10 plus threes in the game. Again, the hottest man in basketball right now. Down to the wire. The Boston Celtics get a win. This felt like one of those games. When I was younger, I, there was a there was a channel free Dawkins. I don't know if he's still around because I don't really watch NBA highlights anymore because I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm watching full games again. You know what I'm saying? Um, there was this channel free Dawkins. I think his name is Free Dawkins Vintage, and he would go back in time and showcase a game where Allen Iverson was battling against Tracy McGrady, and both had 50. And I used to watch those highlights and be like, man, 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 what did I miss? You know, those are the type of games. This felt like that's going to end up on that channel eventually. Ten years down the line, we're going to be like, do you remember the game when Steph Curry had 40 and Jason Tatum had 40 and it was one of the best games of the 2020-2021 season? And it's one of those, man. Definitely one of those. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new. These two teams definitely deserve their own video because they have their own question slash praise that we have to get to. And since the Boston Celtics won the game, I think they deserve to get the video so let's talk about the Boston Celtics. Six-game winning streak. They are the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference right now. Not by much. They only have game above the Hawks and one full game above the New York Knicks, who are also riding, who will get their own video sooner rather than later. Um, but the six-game win streak is very, very important because a couple weeks ago, we were just talking about them being a playing team. We were just talking about them being one of the more disappointing teams of the entire season. And a six-game win streak shows that things could be changing for the better for them. Um, there are a lot of things that were wrong with this team in the early portions of the season. If y'all remember that video, I was talking to them, the Indiana Pacers and the Indy Raptors. And there are a few things that I talked about in that video that they have addressed since then. The first one, we were talking about them being at this crossroads. Do they want to go all in and become this title contender, or do they want to take their foot off the gas? Not saying that they be, be a tanking team, a team that's hitting the lottery, but allowing their younger players to develop a little bit more about, by opening up some minutes for them. And they kind of took that path to an extent. They traded away Daniel Tice to the Chicago Bulls. Shout out to Daniel Tice. He's been pretty solid for us. Um, and allowing Robert Williams to get those starting minutes, that starting run that we knew he deserved. Everybody that watched the Celtics over the past couple seasons knew that Robert Williams was good enough to be a starting center in his league but there are things that he definitely needed to improve on and part of him improving on those things was getting in the starting lineup he's a great defensive player but he can't keep he can't keep his hands to himself you know what I'm saying he's always in foul trouble and getting those starter minutes getting those starters reps can improve him and allow him to get better with with not fouling and since they inserted him to the starting lineup he's been really solid the team is really solid I understand they had injuries the other uh, last night but I'm just talking about over this win streak they have been really good in that aspect one of the other things that we talked about was um, them not being able to pass the ball. It felt like the ball was sticking in players' hands for a very long time. It was Jason Tatum is your ISO turn. Jalen Brown is your turn. Oh, Kimba was an all-star a few years ago. We got to get him his isolations. And though isolation is still a very big part of what this team is doing, Jason Tatum don't drop 40 off catch and shoot. You know what I'm saying? So they have an isolating still, but it feels like the ball is moving a lot. And maybe that's because a Marcus Smart is back into the lineup and he missed a bunch of time beforehand. But the, the ball has been flowing a little bit more. I actually saw something on Reddit the other day where somebody was breaking down Kimball Walker's personal play, and a lot of that has to do with him being more of a facilitator instead of starting to score. He was one of the reasons why the team hadn't been amazing through the first halves because, first of all, he can't stay healthy. He wasn't really playing back-to-backs, and when he was healthy, he wasn't really doing much on scoring the ball or being a facilitator. And it's actually insane. Uh, yesterday, he had his first 20 point, 25 point per game or 25 point or more game in like two months. That's not the Kimball Walker, me and you know, but during his win streak post-All-Star break, he had been more of a facilitator than any time in his NBA career. There are things that are great about Kimball Walker, and passing the ball and being a facilitator has never been one of those things, but during his win streak, he has been. And those are the type of th things this team needed, especially with lo losing Gordon Hayward and not having um, a market smart for a majority of the season. And and the, the one of the main things, the absolute main thing that was, that was hurting the Boston Celtics this season was was the health and safety protocol, the injuries here and there. We already talked about Kimball Walker. Uh, Jason Tatum missed a bunch of time. And even to this day, he is still not 100% after being in health and safety protocols. I can't say exactly what it is, but you know what I'm talking about. The man has been using an inhaler for the first time in his life because his lungs won't open up because he caught this thing. So they had been they had been destroyed all season long. And even right now, they're still dealing with it. Uh, they, they were missing Evan Fournier. You know what I'm saying? They, they were missing a lot of players in that game yesterday, which is makes 
makes this win more impressive because you're missing some really, really good rotational players. Jalen Brown didn't play yesterday, y'all. So they still are completely healthy, but they've been healthier now than they've ever been in this NBA season. And the bench had been bad. Evan Fournier comes in. <laughs> first game, he's terrible. First, I don't know. I don't know. I think it was the first game he played, and Celtics fans can correct me if I'm wrong. The first game he played, I think, was the first game that the fans were allowed back in TD Garden, right? And they're super happy. Let's go. We haven't been great, but we just traded for a guy that's been a 17, 18, 19 point per game score, and he's coming off the bench for us. We're going to be solid. The man was like 0 for 10 on the night. And if I'm not mistaken, please, please tell me if I'm wrong. I think he got a little bit of booze in his very first game. The Celtics fans don't play. You know what I'm saying? They, they don't play. Um, he hasn't been a available most of, of the trade deadline, but we know once he's back, he's going to be back to maybe he's not averaging 17, 18 because he comes off the bench, but he's going to be a competent scorer. They had been missing some bench scoring. For real, for real, their bench unit had been terrible offensively. The one thing that they do have is good defensive players on their second unit. And guess what they did? They signed an offensively gifted player. Jabari Parker. Every time I refer to Jabari Parker, I always say Chicago legend. Because though he hasn't had an amazing NBA career or, or far from even good NBA career, he is always going to be a Chicago legend because everybody that watched Jabari Parker in high school knew that he was the truth. It ain't his fault that he's tore his ACLs twice this many times. And one of the biggest things about Jabari Parker is we knew that offensively he's very gifted. He just didn't defend a damn thing. And the Boston Celtics have defenders on that second unit, so that allows Jabari Parker to do what he does best. Now, I, I would be lying to you if I told you I knew he was going to come in and play big minutes in his very first game and be in, a, be in the game in the fourth quarter in his very first game in the Boston Celtics uniform. Nope, no, I, no, I didn't expect that. But I knew that they would be getting a quality player that can play 10, 15 minutes, and maybe he plays more than that. I mean, on the Sacramento Kings, they're a, a terrible defensive team. They can afford to have Jabari Parker beat out there, you know what I'm saying, when they already have okay offensive pieces. They can afford that. But the Boston Celtics can afford to have Jabari Parker in their lineups because they have Sammy Ojale. They have Prayton Pritchard, who's a really good under uh, under other guard defender. They have good defender. Romeo Lankford. I think the team is almost undefeated where Romeo Lankford plays. You know what I'm saying? And Jabari Parker coming in, and I think he scored like 11 to 13 points or something like that, big-time shots. I'm so happy for him, and I hope I hope he's found a home. Oh, he found a place where he can actually stay in the NBA because it was it was kind of it was kind of dark. It was very dark. I, I definitely thought that once he was released by the Sacramento Kings, that I'm like, this might have been his last stop. But shout out to the Boston Celtics for seeing something in him and seeing the holes in their own personal team and being like, Jabari Parker can actually help us in those places. Um, I don't know if I've really talked about Jason Tatum a lot or, or Jalen Brown a lot in this episode, but obviously those two guys have been stellar. Jalen Brown hit a 40-piece and then sat out a game, and then Jason Tatum had one. And there was a few weeks ago um, when they were going through this, this bad sprout, it was uh, Kendrick Perkins that made a tweet that was like, man, the body language on Jason Tatum looks terrible right now. And I saw a lot of people in his mentions like, bro, what? Like, I don't see it, I don't see it. I saw that. I saw what Ken, what Kendrick Perkins said. <laughs> this might be the only time me and Kendrick Perkins have ever agreed on anything. But I saw the negative body language or like, not that Jay, I'm not saying that Jason Tatum didn't care about some of those games that they were losing, but it didn't feel like he was all the way there. And of course, that could have been him health-wise being dead tired or anything like that. But those things have changed. He's out there playing with a lot of heart. And, and those are the type of things you need. Kemba Walker has been solid. This is the guy that they wanted. This is the guy that they paid. And, and he's one of those guys that when the playoffs come around, I'm sure he's going to be back to an effective NBA player. Um, and, and Marcus Smart, the duality of Marcus Smart is that for a lot of this game, he's one for eight from three. He won't stop chucking, but he hits one of the biggest threes. Where Ken, Ken Bazemore is really tripping. Going back to the game, he misses two free throws, and it allows Marcus Smart to be wide open from three. You knew he was going to shoot. Marcus Smart is very far from afraid of the moment. Yes, he might have been having a, a bad shooting night altogether, but we know he can. And he did. And he did. So the Boston Celtics are back to looking good. Uh, go, I might go back to their schedule because I saw something that said they had one of the easiest schedules left. They have the, the Chicago Bulls in a few days, um, and that would be – on tomorrow night. So that's probably when the Bulls are missing Zach Levine and not playing very great. They have the Phoenix Suns on League Pass. That should be a nasty televised game. That's going to be a good one. Then they have the Brooklyn Nets, which you never know who's going to play and who's not going to play. Then Charlotte, who's been missing a lot of players, who's still holding their own, one game under 500. OKC, Charlotte again. The Spurs, who's had another big win. But they have 
a pretty decently easy schedule left this season. So they're not going to climb up to the three seed because they have four and a half games to make up. The top three seeds are set. It's just a matter of which order for that one seed and two seed. I feel like Milwaukee's stuck at number three. But they can definitely put a lot of room between them and the Atlanta Hawks or the New York Knicks to secure that home court advantage in that first round. Let me know what you think about the Boston Celtics in these last couple weeks because they've been very fun to watch, and it hadn't really been the case for a lot of the season, um, other than, of course, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown being good. But the rest of the team has been fun to watch. I feel like I'm missing showing some love on some players, but they'll get their roses. You know what I'm saying? Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. I'll be back. Remember, April 28th, called game, first very episode. Uh, Be looking forward to it. All right? Peace.